You asked and we delivered. Clinical certified sexuality coach Tony Drumright Antoine is back on the Chris David Show to answer all of your sex related questions. is part mind but part body so we're obviously using our body for sex but it's all in your mind because you can have every intention of going home and putting it down on your partner right but if somebody cuts you off in traffic or you had a bad day you just can't get your mind right you know you got bills do anything like that your body isn't going to work with you welcome to the chris david show where we get more views than the news if this is your first time here welcome I'm your host, Chris David. If you've been here before, welcome back. New family, help yourself and don't leave the fridge open. Our next guest is no stranger to the Chris David Show. Let's welcome back clinical certified sexuality coach, Mrs. Tony Drumright Antoine. Hello. Welcome Hi, back, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming on again. Before we jump into everything, I want you to let everyone know your credentials and how they can get in touch with you. So hello everyone. Um, and for those who saw the last video that I was on, um, welcome back. Um, so again, I'm Tony Trama Antoine. I'm certified sexuality coach and also an intimate luxury consultant with Bedroom Candy. Um, so as Chris mentioned, you know, I was here the last time today, we're going to do some Q and A, um, but you can reach me, um, a couple of ways on Instagram, bedroom candy underscore by Tony. Um, I have my website, the kitty chronicles.co, um, or if you just want to get straight to the good stuff and order products from bedroom candy or uh, book a party, you can go directly to that link, bkparties.com slash 6109 bkparties.com b as in bedroom k as in candy i'm going to put that up on the screen for everyone watching and for everyone listening um the website is the kitty chronicles.co c is in coconut o is in oil and bedroom candy underscore by tony on ig that's candy with a k and an i tony with an i and be sure that you have an underscore in between candy and by or else you will be on the wrong page I don't know who that lady's page is, but it's not this lady right here. Okay. So if you're ready, Tony, I'll go ahead and read the first question. Dear sex coach, my name is Courtney. I'm 30 years old and I've been with my partner for the past seven years. We are hoping to bring some fun into our bedroom, but every time I bring up a suggestion, it gets shot down. What should I do? Um, so I would start off with suggesting things that are in his favor. So it takes away the intimidation factor. Um, and he, you know, some men think that when you want to introduce toys or just, you know, other things into the bedroom, it's always going to involve something with a shaft. Um, so you can, you know, have intimate play or, you know, experiment without things that are going to go inside the vagina to kind of, you know, take away that in intimidation factor. So when I say things that are um, going to be in his favor, and I'm going to show a couple of products for certain questions that um, might warrant it. So the first thing that I would suggest, um, because this will work in his favor, we have a product called Pamper Him. So Pamper Him is a component of our Helping Hand Nail Masturbation Sleeve and our Delicious Encounters Lubricant. So the Delicious Encounters Lubricant, we're going to go into detail about lubricants a little bit later, um, but Delicious Encounters is a flavored lubricant. So the component, the set comes with a strawberry pomegranate. Um, the lube does not come with any sugar. Um, so it is very safe. It is a water-based lube, but I'm going to go ahead and show that to you and how you can incorporate that into your, um, you know, your, your sex life without, you know, being intimidating for him, but it's also going to work in his favor. So I like to show this at my parties. I say this is for one of those nights and I have a headache night. So if you want to bring somebody else into the bedroom without really bringing somebody else into the bedroom, you can use this. Or if you are maybe 
out of town or just, you know, not near your partner, um, he can use this on his own. So the way this works, and I'm going to take this lube here, you have to use lube. you got to, got to, got to use lube, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and lube this up, and hopefully you can see that. And so once it's lubed, you're going to slide this onto the penis, and you're going to give him, oops, the best hand job he's ever had right? So you're going up and down the shaft. Now this is in his favor, but you're both, you know, using it. So, you know, remember when I said it's like uh, bringing somebody else into to the bedroom without really bringing somebody else in, that's because you're going to go halfway down and you give him head on the tip. So again, we have a flavored lube that you're going to use. It's strawberry pomegranate. It's water-based. So this is something that you can bring into the bedroom and you can start off with this. So this is very, um, there is no intimidation factor with this. He's being pleasured. He's getting the benefits of it. This is in his favor. So once you're ready, you know, if this is the only thing that you're going to do and you're not going to um, result in intercourse or if he's ready to come right now, you can pull up and this is going to swallow for you. Okay. So that's something that I would start off with. Um, and, you know, to clean that, you're just going to uh, flip it inside out. You can clean it with soap and water. And just as a PS, that's the only thing I would recommend cleaning with soap and water. Otherwise, I would recommend a toy cleaner. Um, if he's definitely open to doing that and, you know, trying it, um, I would definitely recommend that. Um, also, you can ask him what's considered sexy or, you know, what he would like to try. Um, so sometimes men have an idea in their head already of what it is that they want to do. Um, but another thing that I would recommend is a couple's toy. So we have a toy called Groove. Now, Groove, um, and this is really good and it's really fun. So this is something where it can actually heighten your intimacy factor, especially if you're using this in public. And I know you're, in, you're like in public. So Groove is a remote control toy. It does come with a panty, um, one size fits all, but you can use this in your own panty as well. So this is the remote control. You're gonna give this to your partner and this will go in the panty, right? So this um, remote works 30 feet away from your partner. Um, you can be upstairs, downstairs. You can be at the restaurant or each side of the table. You can be out, you can be in the club. And the reason this is called Groove is because there is a, a function that vibrates to music. So you can be anywhere at a party. It doesn't even matter, but it's that intimacy because it's the two of you knowing that you have this toy inside. And so your partner, you know, he has control of this. Um, and just the way it works is you're gonna go ahead and turn both on, power buttons on um, just to sync them. And so there is one button where you're just constantly pressing. So he can just press and press and press, right? And then the second button has different vibrating patterns. Um, and then the third one, which is why it's called Groove, is the uh, function that is going to vibrate to the base of music. But as a bonus, I always tell people at my parties, it's three and a half. And the half is because it also will vibrate to the base of your partner's voice. So he can vibrate into this and it's going to give you, I mean, he can talk into this and it's going to give you those vibrations. Um, so this is something that um, I would def definitely recommend either Groove or Pamper Him. Again, pamper him is going to work in his favor. And so, you know, I don't think there's a man that's going to turn around, turn away um, something that is going to give him pleasure. But then you can also introduce them. This is not, you know, introduce this. This isn't intimidating. Um, this is actually fun. And especially if you two know, you know, you're the only ones in the room that know that you have this in. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with this. Um, again, your partner can use this. 30 feet away. However, we do have another one that does not come with the remote. It does come with an app. So as long as you two both can download the app on your phone, you can be um, in Brooklyn and your partner can be in Timbuktu. And as long as you can both turn on your phones and use the app, you can use it that way as well. So I, I've sold this, um, the other one to a lot of customers who their partners were truck drivers. I don't know what the, 
so many people have, you know, have purchased this and their partner was a truck driver. Um, but I would recommend something like this or pamper him if you are trying to introduce new things into your bedroom um, and your partner is a little apprehensive. Tony, what is the toy called that runs on the app? Uh, it's called Blue Motion Crush. Now, heads up, though. Um, there is probably 5% of our products that are not on the website. So you would have to reach out to me directly simply because it's made by a third party. So that is one of those toys. If you were to ever reach out to me and say, I want the toy that works on the app, I would know what you were talking about. Um, or you could say something like the toy that's like Groove, but you use the app. Right. And, and Tony gets it. Like she knows her toys. Like you don't have to do a long thing like this next question I'm about to read, but yeah, Tony will, will know and she'll understand. Well, you now, know can what? They... Oh, go ahead. Okay, wait, one last thing. There was another toy that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, sure. Um, it's called Get In Touch. Get In Touch is a lot less intimidating. Again, we're trying to take away that intimidation factor and get your partner to be more, you know, just, um, just want to participate, even though, you know, a lot of people say they want to bring extra things into the bedroom. So this is one of my favorites. Um, it's tiny but mighty. Um, so again, it's called Get in Touch. And you can use this for your beginner's play, solo play, or couple's play. So if you're using this as a couple, um, your partner would put this on their finger um, and then just put it onto the clitoris. This has about 20 speeds off the top of my head, I think 20. Um, and again, it's it's tiny but powerful. Um, so this is another thing that I would recommend, get in touch. Get in touch. Um, now, for them to get in touch, do you want them to go to the bkparties.com slash 6109, or would you rather them, you know, do the email? Um, well, if you know what you want to purchase, you can go directly to the website. Um, it's my website, so I would know, and all ordering is confidential, so I wouldn't know who placed the order or what. Um, sometimes you can create a profile. Even if you create a profile, I have no idea what it is you ordered. Um, but you can certainly go directly to the website to place an order. Um, if you need, if you have extra questions, feel free to get in touch with me as well. Um, I believe if you go to bkparties.com, there is a contact contact, um, you know, something that you can contact me. Otherwise, you can also go to the kittychronicles.co and go to the contact me page. Yes. And all of that for you all watching the video is up in the video. So um, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. I have a question though, really quickly, before I go to this next um, question um, that's like a, a wall of text this young lady sent, um, toy cleaners. Which toy cleaners do you recommend? Yes, yeah, so we do sell a toy cleaner. It's called Sparkle and Shine. And I actually would not recommend soap and water. The um, Pamper Him, the male masturbation sleeve, you can use soap and water with that. However, any one of our other toys, I would recommend a toy cleaner. And when I'm at my parties, the way I kind of describe it, um, I watch a lot of crime TV and you know how the killer comes in and eh, 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 with a knife and then they clean up with, you know, soap and water, right? And then the cops come in and shine that blue light and you see all the splatter. So that's the same concept of when you're just using soap and water to run it under your toys. You're not really cleaning your toys. A lot of toys are porous, which means your body stuff gets down into the pores of your toys and it's not properly cleaning. So toy cleaners are designed to not only preserve the integrity of your toys, but it's designed to properly clean your toys. So I do highly recommend one. Um, we do sell a toy cleaner. It's called Sparkle and Shine. Um, even if you don't purchase a toy cleaner for me, it's so important. Like I'm so passionate about toy cleaner. Just make sure you do have one. So um, everyone should have a toy cleaner in their arsenal. Absolutely. And I hope you all heard what Tony said about toys being porous. And porous means that anything can get into that toy. And if you're going to share toys or, you know, because some people share toys, mm -hmm. just make sure that you... I don't even recommend sharing toys, honestly. And I'm not even the sex expert. I mean, <laughs> if you're going to share a toy, you need to be putting a condom on it or, or doing something. But I mean, if, 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 if by chance you do want to share a toy, you need to get a toy cleaner and thoroughly clean that toy out. This next question comes from Star. Okay. And it reads, Dear Miss Tony, my name is Star. Wait a minute. Star who? 
Star Jones? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. Star says, my long-term boyfriend just came home from Coxsackie after three years. Listen, I, I may need to break out the spectacles for this one. I was so excited to see him that we fooled around right there in the car. After I drove outside the gates, of course. Tell me why when I unzipped his pants and pulled it out, he had these big lumps on the shaft of his penis. I said, I hope you don't have some STD and expect me to be sucking on that. He laughed and said, no, it's called the speed bump and all the guys get it when they go in. He said, it's supposed to stimulate the clitoris and give me more pleasure in the heat of the moment. Now, my man is big, so I'm already satisfied with his performance. But I said, what the hell? He's my man and I love him and we're getting married soon, so I might as well get used to it. At first, our sex life was amazing. He was hitting things that I did not know he could. But then those things started hurting me. And like I said, he's big, so I really didn't need any extra help. Miss Tony, how can I tell him that I want him to get those speed bumps taken out without sounding mean or as if I don't want sex with him? Please help love Star. Now, first of all, Tony, Star sounds like a sweetheart. Like, I, I love know. that she wrote love star at I the know. end. Like, she's writing to her grandma. It's like she's, she's writing a letter to her grandma or something. <laughs> but you know what, Tony? You know what's so funny about this? Remember Doris? You remember Doris, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Doris used to call the pizza place and say, I love you whenever she ordered the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts. But anyway, but anyway, Tony, um, what's your advice for star? Yeah, so I agree. I love how she closed out with love star. So I had to, like, really go deep and you know try to get as much information so i'm gonna try to read some of my notes that i have as well um so for clarification speed bumps or purling it's also referred to as purling um, like pearl necklace um are subcutaneous penile genital beads okay um and that's for anyone who's listening and wasn't quite sure you know what we're referring to as you know, for speed bumps. Um, so Star, just to give you a little bit more clarity, um, they originated in Asian culture and then they moved to uh, Western and then Eastern Europe and then uh, Russia and Australia. Um, so they, you know, even though it's like not something that's completely common here in the United States, it is common in other countries. Um, so it started, you know, over in those countries and men were, you know, there was an increase in men getting them. So the purpose varies. It could be anywhere from sexual pleasure to gang initiation. So there's a variable of reasons um, why men get them. Um, I think the important thing to note is that it creates a high risk of infection. Um, and, that, you know, that can be from a number of things. So in this case, her um, fiance, her boyfriend, her long-term boyfriend got them while he was at Coxsackie, which um, is prison. It's upstate, yeah, yeah, upstate New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, you know, you have to think about a couple of things as far, and, it, you know, especially when it comes to the risk of infection, like who inserted them, you know, um, and I was doing a little bit more research and um, the site that I was on, I was reading up and a lot of men learned and did it themselves, you know, so it doesn't necessarily mean, um, you know, someone else did it, but either way, like, you know, that's a big deal, right? Because it could not have been done in a sterile environment. Um, you know, what materials were used, you know, just a number of things that you think about when it comes to that. Um, also increase, increased rates of STDs or sexually transmitted infections actually um, among sexual partners as the implants can cause trauma. Um, you know, trauma to the receiver. So that would be you, Star. Um, and then it also increases the risk of condom leakage during intercourse because of them. Um, sidebar, just in my research, um, you know, there was one man who has 68 in his penis. So he started out, he inserted eight. And then over time, he just kept doing increments of 10. And I just... I was just like, wow. Um, so, but I think, you know, the more important thing or, you know, to answer your question, sometimes we have to have tough conversations, right? Um, so in this case, you know, um, you can ease into the conversation. Um, I, could, 
I recommend that you do have a serious conversation simply because um, of your comfort. So I think at the end, and let me just see with my notes, um, you know, you can start off by letting him know that, you know, they have been feeling uncomfortable. So also, you know, I was reading up and in my research, it, it mentioned that with speed bumps, you have to be really aroused. And sometimes when we have intercourse, I mean, we want it, we are aroused, but we, we're not extremely aroused. You know what I mean? And so, you know, like you mentioned, it was great in the beginning, but over time it started to become uncomfortable. And your comfort, like, you know, you have to take that in consideration. Your comfort is very important. And then you also mentioned that he's a long term and you two plan on getting married. Um, so it's a matter of having a conversation with him, letting him know that you have been feeling uncomfortable lately. They have been irritating your vagina. Um, and just, you know, in doing research again, the pain for some can last three to four days. Um, and I don't know if, you know, in some people, the pain can last longer, but three to four days of an irritated vagina. Let me tell you something. When my vagina ain't right, ain't nothing right. You know, um, so I can't imagine, um, you know, just the pain and irritation that you're having or just the discomfort that you're having for three to four days. So it definitely warrants a conversation um, and letting you know that, you um, sometimes you're not going to be super aroused. So it's not something that's tangible for like every single, you know, session of intercourse that you have. Hopefully the, he does listen and takes that into account. Um, you know, that the fact that you're walking around, um, ask him if he plans on keeping them in permanently, you know, what's the end goal? Um, because it's a big deal. And hopefully the question can kind of guide you all into, um, you know, more of a, a deeper conversation. Um, one thing that I thought about in answering this question is, you know, if he's a long-term boyfriend and you all did, you know, have plans of getting married, um, it's a shock you know, for your partner to come out and then suddenly he has those that never have a conversation with you. Um, so I think in itself, that's a big deal. Um, just, you know, getting him and not letting you know. Um, he has to understand that you wouldn't have received him well. So when he got him in, there's literally a 50% chance how it will go. You would either like them or you wouldn't like them. And in your case, you said you did like them in the beginning, but now it's starting to hurt and irritate. So at the bottom line, it's going to warrant a conversation. And again, you know, we have to have tough conversations sometimes, but if you don't have it, you're going to constantly walk around and be in pain and you're going to open up yourself to um, sexually transmitted infections. And I don't know if you all are using condoms right now, or if you're planning to um, have kids or, you know, what the condom situation is, but like I said, they can um, cause um, breakage in condoms, which is a big deal, especially if you're using them with the intention of not getting pregnant. Um, so that's something that you really have to take into consideration and, you know, bring it to his consideration as well. But um, at the end of it all, you have to have that conversation with them. And you know what? Tony is a clinical certified sexuality coach. I'm just going to give you some advice, Star, just as a man of a certain age. Um, I really hope that when he left prison, they tested him for all STDs. I don't know, Tony, if they still do that. I suggest that the both of you go and you get tested for STDs. And just, just to make sure that he didn't bring you home anything other than those curling, you know, speed bumps. So yeah, that, that's what I would say to you, Star, and, and good luck um, with, with everything. And when you, uh, you know, decide you're going to get married, make sure you send us an invitation because I will be there eating cake. All right. Because I've been doing the keto. I've been doing good. But, you know, I, I love me some cake. All right. Um, his next question is, is very, very, like, um, one is very simple, Tony. Um, anonymous writes, I think my husband is gay. Please advise. You know what? Anonymous, you're deadpan as hell. Like, I mean... Tony, Anonymous reminds me of this lady I saw the other day on House Hunters. Like, Tony, no lie. She was like, granite countertops. Love those. Hardwood floors. Don't like that. Like, literally, that's how she sounded with every, yeah. like, just so deadpan. <laughs> anyway, Anonymous, <laughs> I think you're trolling, but it's not about what I think. And besides, let me be kind because you could really just write like this and Tony, listen, take it away before I cancel myself. Like, I mean, she's just so good, man. 
Like, it's, this is the sex talk. It's not a mortgage. Like, I need... Listen, maybe this is the excitement that she needs. No, 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 no. Let me stop. I don't know. Well, let me that's... stop. Before these people <laughs> don't want to write in no more, Tony. Let, let, listen, let me let you take it away. I'm going to let you take it away. Well, there's not a whole lot of detail for me to give solid advice. So I kind of had to make a couple of assumptions without really trying to assume this person's life. Um, because I was wondering about a couple of things. Um, you know, what makes you think your partner is gay? So I think it would have been a little more humble. Um, comfortable, it would have been a, a little bit better if you would have included at least that detail. Why do you think your partner is gay? Do you not show you enough attention? Um, is he effeminate? Because not every man is going to walk around like, you know, with the testosterone and the deep voice. With um, a testosterone necklace around their neck. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, but, every man, yeah, I don't, and what, some men are like, just feminine, Tony. Some men are feminine. They're, they're, right, they're cisgendered. Exactly. They're heterosexual. But they just have feminine ways. They have feminine mannerisms. So in this case, you have a couple of choices. Um, number one, communicate and ask him. Now, when you ask him, be sure for any reaction, because this is coming out of left field, especially if he's not gay, right? Um, if he isn't, you've completely thrown him off. Right. So you have to just be sure when you when you ask him that, give him at least, you know, a couple of reasons. Don't let that be just one reason why you're walking around thinking he's gay. Like, you know, he has a soft voice or something like that. Like you have a valid reason and be able to have a full conversation as to why you are assuming or why you think he's gay. Um, now, if he is, decide how you're going to handle it. You know, because I think you're doing a disservice by not having the conversation right now. You're doing a disservice because you, time, life is short, right? Everybody's time is precious. The longer you wait to have a conversation and ask him, the more you're wasting your life. You two both can be having your best lives with other people or in other situations. So release him if he is, right? So the conversation, you know, should be had probably sooner rather than later. Um, I, I just think tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Unfortunately, there's like, like not like a lot that I can say just because I don't know why you're thinking that. Um, just, you know, have the conversation. You're never going to be happy because in the back of your head, if you don't have it, you're always going to think he's gay. And then that can lead to just a whole bunch of other things. So, um, you know, you're never going to feel fully comfortable if you don't just come out and ask him. But just, you know, um, give him grace, you know, regardless of what the response is, um, because if he is, then he is. And you have to decide, you know, how you're going to navigate that world. Are you two going to um, coexist because of whatever reason? You know, sometimes people stay together in the same household because of finances or just, you know, a plethora of other things. Um, but just to decide how you want to navigate that if he is. And then if he isn't, you'll have to figure out a way to um, kind of make him feel comfortable and just kind of I don't want to say bring that trust back because it's not like it's going to um, make him not trust you, um, but just be prepared on how you're going to navigate his reaction. Here's what I'll add to that, um, Anonymous. Um, write us back and um, we need to know how long you've been, you've been married. We would also need to know um, what makes you think that your husband, you know, is homosexual. And also, we want a game plan. Like, we want to know what you want to do, like, as far as if he is, like, how you want to move forward. Because just writing it, and I'm so sorry, like, Tony, she's just so deadpan. Like, it just really bugged me. But just writing in like that doesn't really give us much. Like, I mean, Tony is the expert. She's good at what she does, but you need to give a little bit more, just a little bit more, so we can really help you. Because I, I feel for you, you know, and I do honestly want, to help you. So write us back and we'll do another show like this. Um, probably, well, not probably, definitely next season um, because this season is coming to a close soon. Um, oh, stop. It, it will be back. But, um, you know, definitely write us back and let us know, um, you know, what you want to do. And yeah. even if you, um, even if you write, I know Chris said, um, we'll be doing this again next season. 
I know for me personally, if I have something on my mind and I need a response, I can't. I don't know how you waited this long and you're still in the house walking around thinking this. Like, I need to address things up front. I can say in my head, oh, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to. Yeah. But that lasts like probably 48 hours and then I'm ready to go in and, you know, find out the results or ask a question or something. So, um, Feel free to reach out, you know, sooner rather than later, even if, you know, we need to get a response to you right away, but then we can also address it, um, as Chris said, on the next uh, episode. You know what I'll do too? And I'm glad that you mentioned that, Tony. And I rarely even do this. I don't do this at all. I'll do a live and me and Tony will go on live together. Because I hate lives. I don't, lives are messy to me. They're extremely messy, Tony. Like, I don't, <laughs> it's too much to deal with. But what we'll do is we'll do a live or even, we may even just do a video and I'll just do a short like on YouTube or something like that. And we'll answer this question. But yeah, we'll do a short. Write us back. So, yeah. yeah. Write us, write us back and, and let us know. And, and I mean, you know, worst comes to worst, we'll still, we'll do it next season. But yeah, I don't know how a person could walk around with that on on their spirit for so long. I mean, I'm sure, you know, there are women who've been doing it for many, many years and they just never said anything. And I'm wondering too, if this is a case, you know what also anonymous, um, just tell us where, you know, your your age, just for demographic purposes. You don't have to tell us anything else. I just want to know how old you are. Um, but yeah, um, we have another anonymous question. And okay. All right. Not the last anonymous, you know, I'm I apologize for going in on you for being deadpan, but like this anonymous, I'm about to really go in on you. Like I'm gonna go on you on you for real. So this anonymous wants to know how she can tell her boyfriend about his odor on his penis. And before Tony answers that, I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. Tell him to wash. Tell him to wash it, pull it back and clean it. Cause I'm assuming he's uncircumcised. I'm just assuming. And don't be using that stuff that that lady, you know that lady comes on TV late at night talking about um, rub it on your, your, your wherever, you know, rub it on this part, part that stinks. Don't use that. He needs to use a separate rag for his genitals. And you'd be surprised, Tony, how many people don't even do that. Well, how many people don't use washcloths at all? Because I was at a hotel. I was out of town. I was at a hotel the other day and none of the housekeepers knew what I was talking about when I said, a washcloth really? not even in spanish because i my spanish is kind of like really shaky but i have in my phone you know translator not even in spanish like i had to show her one of the ones that i had already had so i don't know but anonymous it says here that you're 41 um so i'm assuming your boyfriend's around the same age like he should really know how to clean by now like I don't know. I just had, I had to go in because it's just like, how are you not cleaning and pulling Tony take it away? Yeah. No. So you hit the nail on the head. That was actually this, the first thing that came to my head as well. Like based on her age, I'm going to assume that her boyfriend is anywhere from, she's 41, anywhere from, I don't know, 35 to 45, but at any rate, um, he's old enough to know. Um, so this is again, where we have to have tough conversations and you know, the weather we're in the summer. So this conversation needs to be had sooner rather than later. Um, now out of respect, men will typically know that they should handle their business before what are trying to get busy, right? Um, so people know when they aren't fresh and that's from either you can smell yourself or you know when the last time it is that you bathed. Um, so I just, this one kind of threw me off because that's a big deal. You know, for me personally, I have an extremely strong sense of smell. So I just can't imagine, um, you know, being with someone who, especially intimately, and their penis had an odor to it. Um, so I, here's what I'm going to recommend. And, um, you know, like I said, I have a couple of products for the questions that are warranted. Um, you can do one of two things. Flat out tell him because your comfort should come first right? Um, and your happiness comes first and comfort and happiness goes hand in hand when it comes to a relationship and someone's cleanliness. Um, so sometimes people hit me to hear the harsh truth, especially a grown man. Um, you can ease into it. 
So again, you're going to have it flat out or you can ease into it. If you ease into it, you can kind of do it in a way where you're upgrading his um, wellness routine or um, his hygiene. Um, the first thing that I will recommend is our balance bar. Um, so the balance bar, um, and I use this personally, I love this. You can use it, it's designed for your intimate areas, or you can use this all over your body. Um, this was actually created by one of our bedroom candy consultants who is a chemist by day and she's a consultant by night. So um, I love this. This is, prop I buy this in bulk. Um, so this, again, it's the balance bar. All of our bath and body products are vegan friendly, um, but this has, um, essential oils to moisturize and soothe dryness. So you don't have to worry about any harsh ingredients or chemicals. Um, but the most important thing that I want to mention that this provides both antifungal and antibacterial properties that help prevent odor and bacteria. Um, it also balances out the pH as well. Um, so there's no smell to it. There's nothing crazy to it. It's simply um, a body bar. Um, so this is how it looks. Um, I swear by this. I really love it. So you can start off with kind of upgrading his hygiene if you don't want to. You know, sometimes people kind of take hints or cues when you do things. If you don't feel comfortable having a flat out conversation, which I, in my, I, in my opinion, I think you should just because of um, just because of the age range. And at this point, you know, as they say, at his big age, um, he should know better. Right. Um, so I would recommend either that or you can ease it into it, um, ease it into the conversation by giving him a balance bar. Um, also, we have a product called Sugar Daddy. So Sugar Daddy is, um, it's an intimate elixir. Um, so this is something that it's pH balanced. It's also, um, it has antifungal and antimicrobial properties. It prevents yeast and bacteria topically. Um, so that's important as well. Um, his odor can stem from a couple of things. It could be just from poor hygiene or it could be from health reasons, or it could be from some of the ingredients that he's using to wash his intimate areas. Um, you know, some people will, will wash with anything, Irish spring, dish detergent, whatever it is that they have. Um, so I recommend that you don't do that. <laughs> you can create like your own little gift mm -hmm. for your man and give it to him and encourage the hygiene. Like say, hey, say to him, hey, you know, I really want to Try this out. I really want to use this toy on you. I think it would blow your mind and blow some other things. And, you know, you put this together, you know, and then you convince, you tell him, hey, but I need you to use this soap. I need you to use this, this uh, sugar daddy elixir and use that and, and convince him to do these things so that in the end result of him doing what he needs to be doing anyway, he gets a reward. Some people need positive reinforcement. They mm -hmm. just do. And the most important thing that I forgot to mention about um, Sugar Daddy is it smells citrusy. It smells so good. Um, we have a sister product to it. So even though this says BK for men, this is unisex. Um, we have another product like the sister version to it is called um, Hot Cakes, H-A-U-T-E, Cakes. And that one smells like cake, but these are vegan um ingredients. Um, with hot cakes, the ingredients come together to just so happen to smell like cake. So who wouldn't want their intimate areas smelling good? Um, so that's another thing. Um, just the fact that if he wore this and he smelled citrusy or he smelled good, that would kind of draw you to him more. Um, so that's another thing. Even if you wanted to start off with them, with this one, have him put it on and then just explain how good he smells. Um, I definitely would start off with the soap as well, the balance bar as well, so he can clean himself first and then use this. Um, but between the two of them, um, there's no, you know, odor, no bacteria, kind of, you know, it gets rid of the fungus and then, you know, you're finishing it off with a good smell. So, and then, you know, just the way this works, it has a dropper to it. Um, important to note, this has coconut oil in it. So, you know, coconut oil solidifies at 76 degrees. So if it's, um, cooler than 76 degrees, it gets solidified a little bit. What I do is just run it under water um, for a couple of minutes or um, like, I don't know if you can really see right now how the dropper kind of has coconut oil around it. Um, if you just put it on your hand and just let it touch it, it melts 
Um, and you only need about three to four drops, four or five drops, whatever. Um, but it melts as it touches your warm skin and it smells really, really good. So that is something that I would re recommend as well. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So our next question comes from Hanif from Uptown. Now, here's my question, Hanif. Is that Uptown like Harlem or Uptown like West Oak Lane in Philly? Anyway, Hanif says... Oh, that's a good question. Right. Like, I assume, you know, it's funny because I assumed Uptown is in Harlem, right? Right. But I was thinking to myself, I've only met or knew of guys named Hanif in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe, maybe Philly. So that's so funny right. that you say that. So I, I just assumed because I didn't know there was an Uptown in Philly. Yeah, they um so West Oak Lane, German some parts sometimes they say Germantown, usually Mount Airy, um, is considered uptown. Um, shout out to Uptown. But anyway, um, Hanif says, I'm 43 years old, a C-level executive, six foot four, and I work out six times a week. I'm conventionally handsome, but I've never been intimate with a woman. Back in college, I came close, but the girl had weird breath and it turned me off. Women literally throw themselves at me and I date them, but all, and I date them and all, but we never go further than that. I find myself to be very attracted to women, but the thought of being intimate just turns me off. Okay, listen, Hanif, I got to just give you the blue screen. Okay. I have told my friends, but they tell me I might be homosexual. I'm not homosexual because I've never been attracted to or intimate with a brother. My therapist is telling me I, may, I might be asexual. I don't think that, that I'm that because I do masturbate. The problem is, is that it's, it's this one woman at work and I like her so much, I can honestly see marrying this lady. She's 37 and divorced with no kids. She looked like she could be related to Ryan Destiny. Oh, wow, she's a baddie. Mm -hmm. We've already been, right? We've already been on four or five dates and now I can tell she's wanting to close the deal. How can I get over my anxiety when it comes to being intimate? And you know what, Tony? I'm glad you mentioned the obvious because I heard y'all in my ear while I was reading. I heard y'all ask, and I heard y'all also asking for his ad, and I'm not giving out this man's info. Tony, <laughs> take it away. For the woman that you're pursuing, you say you want, you see yourself marrying her. Um, so I think the best way is to start off with communication. Um, you may want to explain, um, you know, how you feel or just give her like an overview of your experience. Um, and that way she might be a little bit more understanding of why you haven't closed the deal yet. Um, now I do want to introduce, now you mentioned talking to your therapist about the possibility of you being asexual and you don't agree. Um, I want to introduce you to another term, which is gray sexual. And I'm going to read from my notes here. Um, so Gray sexual, and it's spelled G-R-A-Y sexual or G-R-E-Y. You know how we spell the word gray a couple of ways. And it's also uh, referred to as gray A or gray asexual or gray ace, A-C-E. Um, it's a term to describe people who identify as asexual but don't fit the main type of asexuality. So there's three main types. One is sex repulsed, someone who is repulsed by or completely disinterested in the idea of sex. There's sex neutral, which is someone who isn't repulsed by sex, but is but also doesn't actively seek it out. These people may still have sex if, for example, they're in a relationship and want to please their partner. And then there's sex positive. That's someone who identifies as asexual, meaning they don't feel attraction to others, but they still have sex for pleasure. I would encourage you to address that term with, with your therapist and maybe you two can kind of dig a little bit deeper into that term to see if you're more comfortable with, with identifying as that. Um, because it sounds like you could possibly um, fall into that category. And then the fact that you have the anxiety of not being with a woman and your age, honey, is 43. So the fact that you have gone this far without it is that anxiety is contributing to that. Um, so I, I definitely encourage you to have that conversation with your therapist. But in the meantime, I'm also wondering um, if you have thought about, um, you know, in the conversation with her, um, just kind of, uh, 
not making it a challenge, but just um, giving her um, or encouraging her to give ways that she can kind of, you know, give get you aroused or kind of ready to close the deal. Um, I'm wondering also if you watch porn, and if so, do you get aroused by porn? Um, because maybe that's something that you two can do together and see if you are aroused watching porn in her presence. Um, sexting is another thing, you know, if porn isn't an option or if that's off the table, maybe you two can sex, like send um, explicit or sexual text messages and see how you are reacting to those. Um, and then um, lastly, I would recommend phone sex. So, you know, I don't know if people still have a lot of phone sex, but those are a couple of options that you can do. And just the mere fact that I think it's the anxiety that's like really taken over. So you can kind of think of ways that would help ease your anxiety. Um, I didn't plan on talking about CBD products, um, especially with your question. However, we do have a CBD line called Unwind. So if you're not familiar with CBD, and I don't know what, what your situation is, um, honey, if you indulge, um, meaning in edibles or weed or other, you know, alcohol, I don't know what your situation is. And if you don't indulge in alcohol, I don't necessarily want to encourage you to pick up a trait that um, might be against your way of living. However, CBD would be another option. So for those who are not um, familiar with CBD, um, think weed, but without the THC. So THC is a component of weed that gets you high. Um, so again, we have a line of CBD products called Unwind. So within Unwind, and I have on my desk here because this is my favorite, um, this is our body cream, or I, I'm going to say cream, not necessarily body. Um, so this is a um, 100 milligrams of CBD. And the way I use this sometimes, you know, especially like when I do my bedroom candy parties, um, I've been in the game for 15 years, but still every once in a while, I randomly get anxiety. And so we have a smaller version of this um, that I keep in my purse. Um, it's identical. It's just a smaller amount of milligrams. Um, but sometimes I'll put this on my pulse points. I'll put it under my nose because the smell of it is very, very comforting and soothing. I'll put it on my, my temples. Um, so maybe you can use a CBD product um, that'll help calm and um, aid in your relaxation. Um, so CBD helps with a variety of things, pain management, like I said, anxiety, calming, relaxation. We also have a CBD lube. Now, I know you haven't closed the deal yet, um, but once you're ready to close the deal, maybe the lube can kind of continue with that relaxation. And then also, um, you know, once you get her to your place or you get to our place and you all are... Um, pre-intimate, you can also think about massage. So we have an, a CBD candle that lights and melts into a massage oil. And that again has, you know, something that you can use for relaxation. So we have a couple of things. Um, also a serum. So that may be something that you can think about using as well. Um, just some type of um, product that would help calm and ease your anxiety. Um, but definitely, you know, the porn thing, um, definitely consider that. Um, if she looks like my in Destiny, honey, if I need you to close the deal. Um, I'm, I mean, you know, I might have to come close that deal. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, honey, I'm excited for you. Um, but definitely, I would visit that term gray sexual with your therapist because that's something that you possibly fall into that category. And that's saying that you may never close the deal because, I mean, I think it definitely is possible. Um, but just consider, you know, some of those things. Um, and hopefully that will help. Absolutely. And, and Hanif, I just want to say this, you know, I, I really, if your therapist isn't doing this, I think you need to find one whom, whom is. Um, look into shadow work. Look into someone who can help you really tap into that part of yourself to really get out like why this may be happening for you. You know, definitely look into that. But I think Tony, um, I think, you know, if he does what you say, you know, he'd be on the right track. Really quickly though, um, the unwind CBD, what is that scent like? The unwind? The, that you use? Mm -hmm. So it's lavender, but the thing is, it's not an overwhelming lavender because sometimes lavender can be so strong, but it's yes. lavender and mint. Um, 
And the lavender is so light. It's just such a calming fragrance to me. I really like it. So a lot of times I put it here. Just, um, especially when I'm in the car, I'll put it here. So as I'm driving, I'm just smelling it. And especially when we were wearing masks and I was out in the world, yes. <laughs> I would put it there. And the fact that I had my mask on, I was able to really inhale it and sniff it. But it's a very nice. light lavender mint smell. Another thing I'm adding to my list to, <laughs> you know, order from uh, bkparties.com slash 6109. All right. This next question comes from... Oh, Lord. Comes from my good sis, my homegirl, who's also named Tony. So hey. shout out to her. Hey, Tony. Tony N81 on IG. Now, she wants to know about these lubricants that are popping up all over Instagram. They claim they balance your pH. They also provide, like, some type of lubrication during sex and masturbation. Tell us about those. Yes. So I wasn't sure. Um, she said Instagram lubricants. So I wasn't sure she meant lubes on Instagram that people advertise or lose yeah. on my Instagram? Well, I'm no. not, not on my Instagram page. No, not on your Instagram, but on like, they, they pop up, they like ads. Okay. Um, so I've never seen the ads. So therefore I'm not okay, sure, good. but what I will say is you really, really have to be careful about a lot of the lubes that you use. Update on Instagram lubes, Yoni slime and others. The ingredient fructose cyanide lack significant research for proven claims as there is no scientific evidence of its benefits. Another ingredient, Radix angelicae sinensis, may cause increased blood pressure and or affect blood thinners in larger doses. Failure to appropriately clean the applicator after each use may possibly contaminate the product with bacteria. Consult with the physician before trying any product and err on the side of caution when purchasing and consuming products found on social media apps. So um, lubes of, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago are not the same as lubes now, depending on the company. So we still have companies who are in business from those, you know, from back then who sell, and I'm not going to name drop, um, but not every lube is good. But I'm going to get into BK, BK lubes. I can talk about lube all day, baby. So that's what we're going to do. So we have a person that's dedicated solely to lubes. We take our lubes very seriously. Um, and there's a lube for any situation. So if you want to do water play, if you want something that mimics your body chemistry, um, I have a whole little situation right here. So we're going to get into it. Um, now, lube is different, um, you know, for different people, especially when it comes to how much lubrication you want, how your body is lubricating. Um, sometimes, and most of us, most women at some point will experience some type of lack, uh, lack of lubrication, and that can be from a number of things. It could be um, new medication, hormones, stress, you didn't drink enough water today, you know, your mind isn't right because somebody cuts you off in traffic on the way home. Um, just a number of things why we don't get properly lubricated. And so when we don't lubricate the right way, we're opening up ourselves to micro tears in our vaginal area or the anal area. Um, and that will in turn introduce bacteria into your body um, via the va vagina or the anus. So we don't want that, right? Um, so it's very important that we do use lube, even if we feel like we're lubed up a little bit, um, wetter is better, okay? Um, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of lubes that we have. Um, of course, the vagina creates lubrication. The anal area does not create lubrication. Um, of course, the anal area does have mucous membranes, but that's for exiting and not entering if you know what I mean, right? And I think you do. Um, so, you know, when you have those micro tears because you're not properly lubricating, um, that also will open you up to sexually transmitted infections as well. Um, so some people don't really like to use lube because they don't like the way it feels. So in that case, I would recommend, and most of our lubes are water-based and the ones that are not, I'm gonna mention. Um, so just to start off, um, we have our naturals lubrication. Um, so the essential, so it's natural essential intimates lubrication or lube. Um, this one mimics a woman's body lubrication. So if you don't want something that's ultra sticky or thick or anything like that, um, this is the one you want. This is like the most basic of lubes. Um, so this is really good. It's water-based. Um, so it's not going to interfere with any of your toys. Um, before I forget, I want to mention if you use a silicone toy, a silicone toy does not 
uh, get along with the silicone lube. So that's why a water-based lube is gonna be good for not only you, but also using with your toy, okay? Um, we also have a warming lube. So warming lubes are good for just a certain demographic. Not everybody wants to use a lube that feels warm. Um, with this, um, if you pour this on like your hand, you're not going to feel warm. Um, again, mucous membrane. So like if you put it on the inside of your mouth, you would feel that warming to get an idea of how it would feel. Um, this is also a water-based lube as well. And like I said, it's just for like a certain type of demog demographic, but the active ingredient in this is menthol. So if you like a little bit of tingle or, you know, slash warmth, then the warming lube might be for you. Right. Um, so and that's menthol what... from mint, not the cigarettes. All right. Correct. Yes. Yes. Very okay. good. <laughs> um, so next we have. Sorry, we have to tell the people. Yes. <laughs> Educate and empower. <laughs> uh, so the next thing we have is our tea lube. Now, tea lube was originally designed for the trans community, um, well, trans men, to keep them in mind. And it comforts periodic periodic dryness, um, and it, it enhances natural lubrication. Um, so this is good. It has aloe vera in it. Um, it's good for day-to-day, -day, and it also has vitamin E in it, okay? Now, we also have another one simply because this was so popular as far as the benefits of it. We have another one called um, On the Daily. So it's almost like pretty much the same thing. Um, it's just more... Um, you know, people, there's a misconception and tea lube is made for trans men, so I don't want to use that. Um, but you can, anybody can use it. Um, but on the daily is pretty much the same concept. Um, you know, we have women who are premenopausal or menopausal and they experience extra dryness. That on the daily lube is designed so that you can use on a regular basis and is, you know, you can use it daily. Again, it has um, aloe in it, aloe vera, and an ingredient called carrageenan. Um, and it, it's used for regular and periodic dryness. Um, again, with menopause, um, again, you can use it on a regular basis every day. Um, we also have our Delicious Encounters lube. So I mentioned Delicious Encounters earlier when we talked about the Pamper Him. So Delicious Encounters does not have any sugar in it, even though it is a flavored lube. So I, I definitely want to um, just stress that there's no harmful ingredients. This is a water-based lube. Um, this one is tangerine peach. It also comes in uh, pomegranate, strawberry pomegranate, and then uh, green apple. So um, the flavor, it's flavored with something called aspartame. So again, there's no sugar. Um, this is really good for oral sex. Um, again, you're going to use this with pamper him if you have intentions of giving oral. Um, so I like it. Um, now, one of the alternatives to a water-based only lube is um, we have one called Silk. Uh, do I have Silk over here? Here's Silk. This is the one that I demoed earlier with Pamper Ham. Um, so Silk is a, it's a hybrid of water-based and silicone lube. Um, this has 11% silicone lube. So you can still use this with a silicone toy. Um, this is also good for water play or anal play. Um, and then for the ultimate in marathon sessions, water play and anal play, we have Sleek. Where is Sleek? This one is Sleek here. Um, so Sleek is 100% silicone. Um, it is safe for condoms. It is not safe with your toys. Um, all of our toys are made with medical grade silicone. So we don't wanna break down those toys or compromise the integrity of them because you're using a silicone lube. Um, so I would recommend you know, any one of those. So for whatever, what you're trying to accomplish, um, I would recommend just, you know, take it into consideration what I just talked about. Um, and unfortunately, Tony, I couldn't give you information about the Instagram loops. I can't believe I have never seen any of them. Um, but I just would recommend, you know, if you don't um, take advantage of any bedroom candy loops, just be mindful of some of the ingredients. And even if you have to Google some ingredients, um, our, our lubes are vegan friendly, but if you have to Google to see what some of these ingredients are, I would encourage you to do that. And just be mindful of, you know, again, what it is that you're putting into your body. Because, you know, I have customers from time to time who have mentioned that they've used a lube, not Beverly Candy, um, but they have used a lube that 
they were allergic to or it didn't agree with their um, vaginal area. So that is just something that you want to keep in mind. But yeah. I was trying um, to look through how would she and I's text to see if I could find if she, you know, like sent me um, a screenshot or something. Mm -hmm. But I can't find anything and I'm not texting her because she's going to distract me while I'm doing this video because <laughs> that's just our relationship. But here's the thing I'll say. A rule of thumb, unless it's food at a restaurant with like an A grade, don't mm -hmm. buy it off of Instagram. Like just, just I'm talking about like any and everything you see on there, phone cases, massages, those stupid ass jeans, like lubes, just don't do it. Like you will regret buying things off Instagram because most of the time it doesn't even arrive. It won't even come to your house. It's not even going to come to your door. So why waste your money on that? And she... This is my friend, so I could talk greasy to her. She knows better. She knows this. <laughs> she knows this. But I have a question, though. I have my own personal question. Mm -hmm. Water base versus silicone. Like, why, you know, what are the differences? So, silicone is a thicker loop. So, like I said, silicone is good for anal play, water play, and um, marathon sessions. So, let's say you're, you're doing water play. A water-based lube mimics a woman's lubrication, which is thin. It's fairly thin, it's thinner than a silicone lube. So if you're in the water, the water is going to wash away a woman's natural lubrication. So pretty much the same concept with a water-based lube. Um, it's not as thick to sustain, sustain um a silicone lubricant. So uh, also with water-based lubricants, um, I wouldn't recommend it for a marathon session. If you want marathon, you want to use something with that slick in it or the slip so that you can feel, um, you know, just the lubrication. You don't feel the need to have to get up and reapply it. Got you. Um, thank you, Tony. Like that's, that's very, very helpful because I didn't know the difference. For toys, though, you recommend water-based, though, for toys. Correct. Right. Yes, silicone okay. does not get along with silicone. Right. Got it. We have a few more questions. The next one asks, Dear Mrs. Antoine, my name is Rachel. I'm 40 and I've never had an orgasm. I've been with my husband since 2004 and we have three beautiful children. I'm happy with my hubby, but I want to experience what I hear so many of my girlfriends bragging about at brunch. One of my girlfriends went so far as to having sex with her masseuse to bring her to an orgasm a few times a week. Her husband has no idea. And I sure hope to God that he's not an Instagram masseuse, but anyway, I'm gonna keep going. Um, I don't think I need to have sex with another man. And my DH, and we've been through this whole DH thing, diabetic hamster, and, and Tony, listen, I misread your text, so I didn't know that, I thought you said designated Hitler, not designated Hitler, Hitler. <laughs> Like, like this show, <clears throat> this show is the worst. Like we're the worst. But anyway, it's dear hubby. I think it's dear hubby. Okay. So, dear hubby, um, my dear hubby, DH, isn't in inadequate. If you know what I mean, what should I do? Sincerely, Rachel, and she left her last name, but I'm not going to read it. It's very highfalutin. Like she sounds like upper crust, talented tenth, like our kind of people. With this, like she she name, like. <laughs> Anyway, what do you think, Tony? What do you think? So, Rachel, when you say you never have an orgasm, I'm going to assume at all. That's the way I took the uh, the message to me that you've never even pleasured yourself to give you an orgasm. So the first thing that I would recommend is you get to know your own body and do some pleasure mapping there. Um, because I would want you to know what it is that you would like to feel like in order to teach your husband how, how you want to feel. Does that make sense? Um, so I would recommend that you first start off by touching yourself, stimulating yourself um, on your own body in order for you to kind of really get an idea of an orgasm. Um, so you can give yourself an orgasm or of course your husband can give you an orgasm. Um, now I was wondering what is your interaction like? Like what is foreplay like? Do you have foreplay? Right? Because foreplay doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, two minutes and then bam, 
intercourse. Um, so you can really take your time with inter uh, with foreplay so that you can kind of touch each other. You can take his hand with your hand and guide it to where it is on your body that you want to feel that's going to help you get an orgasm or achieve an orgasm. Now, when we talk about orgasms, you can get it a couple of ways. There is a clitoral orgasm, vaginal, and then anal. Um, so I would recommend first just, you know, a couple of foreplay exercises, um, especially with pleasuring yourself. Um, we have a couple of books that I'm going to recommend. Um, so one is called um, Tickle Your Fancy, A Woman's Guide to Self-Pleasure, to Sexual Self-Pleasure. Um, so it has 30 masturbation techniques, right? So I would highly recommend that first so that you can just get to know your own body. And this is basically under the assumption that you've never, ever had an orgasm. Let's see, Rachel is 40. I don't know, maybe, but so this is under the assumption you've never had an orgasm at all. I, I definitely recommend that book because with 30 different techniques, you should definitely be able to find something that not only you can use on yourself, but then you can teach your husband as well. Because sometimes we got to teach, you know, um, he's not going to. And then without communication, he doesn't know that he's not pleasuring you um, the way you want. Rachel, I don't want you to get it from the masseuse. I want it, you know. I want you to get it from your husband. Um, so just it's a matter of communication and then just kind of exploring with different ways. Um, so for you, I would recommend um, the book. Let's see, I wrote it here. Uh, Tickle Your Fancy, once again. And then I'm going to recommend The Mystery of the Undercover Clitoris. So um, I talk about this book a lot at my parties where sometimes you'll have a partner who just can't find the clitoris, um, even though it's right there. Um, and with the clitoris, you know, we can go into a whole, um, anatomy lesson, but the clitoris on the inside of your body, it, it's bigger than, um, what we think. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult for your partner to find the clitoral area. So I would def definitely recommend that book, The Mystery of the Undercover Clitoris. And maybe you can kind of give it to him in a way that, you know, in the bedroom, maybe we can try something new. You know, well, I read a couple of sections from this book. Um, you know, maybe you should read a couple of sections too. You can kind of make it <clears throat> a thing between the two of you. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're shoving this book in his face and say, here, read this. And, you know, throwing a hint that way, you can kind of make it in a way that you're both reading it together. Um, and that book gives ways to arouse the clitoris. So that is something that <clears throat> will definitely help in the long run because a clitoral orgasm, Rachel, is a beautiful thing. Um, and then if you want to introduce toys into the equation, and I don't know how open your husband would be to that, you can introduce toys in a way that's going to help with um, kind of like dual stimulation. So if for example, we have uh, get in touch, right? So let's say your partner is, um, you know, you're in the, the act of intercourse. So the penis is in, right? He or you, um, you know, you can have it just to start off. You can um, use get in touch on the clitoris while he's inside, while he's penetrating. And that dual stimulation can help with an orgasm. Or, Rachel, I'm going to talk about womanizer. <clears throat> now, Rachel, this is definitely going to give you an orgasm. Um, at Bedroom Canyon, and this is called a womanizer. This comes in three different styles. This is womanizer pro. At Bedroom Candyland, we refer to this as the soul snatcher. Um, so for first time, maybe I would recommend a seatbelt. Like, that's how powerful this thing is. So womanizer, um, this is kind of close to what's referred to as the rose, but it's not like the rose. And the reason why is because this is not suck. It has what's called pleasure air technology. So it's almost the equivalent of someone rapidly like on the clitoris and it's blowing so rapidly, it feels like someone is sucking, but it's not suction. Um, and so you can kind of, you know, start off with a lower speed, a lower setting. And this is also good for squirting as well. I know that's not your question, but um, this will definitely, you know, this can definitely bring you to an orgasm. So it's possible that you can give this to your husband. He can use this on you or you can, um, again, while he's penetrating, he or you can hold this onto the clitoris. Um, but Rachel, it does warrant a conversation and not in a way that, 
um, is going to be abusive to his ego or anything like that, just in a way that you can both try something else. So again, you can get the book and you can both read the book at the same time. Um, you can each get a book and kind of book club it. Um, but there's definitely ways that you can do it or, um, you know, just uh, have the conversation so that it's not going to be detrimental to your relationship. Um, but it's definitely something that should be had. And even if, like I said, if you have to pleasure yourself while he's watching and he's seeing where it is that you're pleasuring yourself. Um, but the point is you have to first learn um, where it is that you want to be pleasured for you to have an orgasm. I'm looking, she says she's 40. They've been together since 04. I'm assuming that they were together a little bit before then. So they've probably been together, you know, since their teens. And they probably never got a lot of exploration, so to speak. So, and that's fine. They can explore with each other. I mean, th the main thing is we don't need her getting smashed by the IG massage therapist. True. I mean, they give very much peachy dish. And by the way, Rachel, does your family own the radio station? Just never mind. You can email me if 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 they do, but I'm just curious. But anyway. Our next question, Tony, comes from Jamel. And Jamel wants to know, wait a minute. I know a J Jamel. Is this the Jamel or another Jamel? I don't, anyway. Jamel wants to know how he can ask his girlfriend to do anal play on him in the bedroom. Okay, so Jamel, I know it might not be an easy conversation, um, but in this case, it's all about the communication. Um, so you can start with explaining to her the benefits of pegging and that your G-spot is back there and that you would like to experience a G-spot orgasm um, because there's nothing wrong with that. And there's also health benefits of prostate massage and, you know, we can go into a whole tangent about that. Um but I would think communication um, should be the number one priority and just letting her know that you would like to feel that G-spot orgasm. Um, what I would do first is probably start off with a smaller, something smaller like a plug, just to get her um, used to the idea of having something back there. Um, we do have a couple of things that, um, and I don't have them here personally, we do have a couple of things um, you know, that you could possibly try, but that probably would be the best route that I would go, just starting off with a plug so that she can see something smaller and get used to that idea. And then once she's more comfortable with seeing that, you can then introduce pegging. And so pegging is basically the act of use a woman using a strap on. Um, so that probably would be the best option, I think. And hopefully um, she's open to that, you know, in our community, there's the misconception um, when it comes to men and anal play. So hopefully having a conversation um, is going to have her um, be a little bit more receptive and that she's understanding to how it is that you feel. And especially when you talk about the benefits and you wanting to experience that G-spot orgasm. So I would definitely go that route. Um, you know, it's just that that misconception about straight men and anal. Um but hopefully you brought the conversation up before so that it doesn't completely surprise her and catch her off guard. So if you haven't, you may want to just at least have a conversation first and then just wait a little bit longer um, just to kind of get her comfort level. And then you two can both go on and try to choose a plug together. Um, and that way it's including her in it. I don't uh, he didn't include how long they've been together. So that's a good question. That's something that I would like to know. Um, Write us back long, and let us know. How long they were together, because that is a big deal. Because it's the difference between just meeting someone and she's not understanding of like, you know, mm -hmm. your whole being, your whole personality, um, as opposed to being someone long term and they want the best for you and they want to, you know, enhance your sexual life in the bedroom. Um, but I would just start with the whole conversation about a plug first, you know, along with the communication about how it is that you want to feel um, the G-spot orgasm, the benefits of, you know, prostate massage and things of that nature, and then we'll go into pegging. I want you to... Tell us about those benefits of prostate massage. 
Um, so it can um, aid in men's health. So, you know, with men's health, along with like your physical issues, you should definitely be going. Um, and I don't know if it's at a certain age. So with women, you know, with um, once we get to a certain age, we have to have the breast exam and things of that nature. But men should- It's 40, Tony. 40, it's 40. It's men as well. Mm -hmm. So for um, men, they should also have prostate massage and exams because it also- um, helps aid in cancer prevention and there's health benefits to it as well. Um, so just like, you know, things that we do for women, men are also, you know, they, they're deserving of, you know, feeling things that they prefer. And so in this case, it seems like this is his preference, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with being gay or um, anything of that nature. He may not have been with men before, anything like that. It's just a preference for men. Um, so, you know, I just really hope that she's understanding it understanding enough after they have the conversation um, that she would be open and receptive to her. But I definitely wouldn't try um, the pegging first, simply because that's, that's big to go from zero to 100. And that's basically what you're doing um, with anal play, um, if you're trying it with pegging. But I um, just recommend a plug um, and they come in different sizes. We have one called P Curious. It's fairly small. Um, I think that probably would be the most understanding one um, for her if she's not used to it or if that's not something that she's ever done with a male before. Um, but just explore different things. We have one called Step by Step. And um, Step by Step is unfortunately being discontinued. I, I know I have one or two in my bedroom candy store. Um, you can find this one on my link tree. Um, Chris, you can, I'll give you that information to link. Um, but this depends on the size toy that you want. I wouldn't recommend something that's just going to blow her away um, the minute she sees it, simply because it's going to be too intimidating. It, it might be too much for her. Um, so just have that mm -hmm. conversation and start off with something small. Nice. I had no idea that that the prostate massage aided in like cancer prevention. I had no idea. Well, there's, there's a lot of health um, health benefits. Right. And so when I was with the previous company, um, so I'm with Veron Candy now, but I started off mm -hmm. in the previous company. And so um, we had a lot of women in the Midwest. So with Veron Candy, our demographic is mainly Black women mm -hmm. um, who are consultants. But with the other company, it was all demographics. And so we were just always wondering why are the women in the Midwest selling all of our anal toys, right? The, the toys for men to use anally. And it's because certain demographics are more open to, you know, the prostate massages and prostate toys, as opposed to men in our community um, who, you know, who are heterosexual, but apprehensive to that. Um, so it's just, it really depends on the demographic. I'm going to assume Jamel is a black man. I don't know what the yeah. demographic is. I um, mean, with a name like that, <laughs> Tony, he better be. Um, I don't know the demographic of his girlfriend. Um, but at any rate, hopefully, you know, they have that conversation. A lot of the questions that we have today, like the main thing is communication, you know, and this, I think I've said it a couple of times today, you know, we have to have those tough conversations. And I don't think this is necessarily a tough conversation. This is just a conversation about her being receptive to um, what his preference is. So Jamela, I hope it does work out for you. I hope so too. And I mean, you know, that that's like, this helps me too, because I learn so much when every time we talk and you come on, like I had no idea that there were benefits in that. All right, so our last and final question comes from Vanessa. Vanessa says, help, I keep getting the wrong size toys and it's making me uncomfortable. How can I find the right size toy for my cat emoji? And Tony, she really put a cat emoji. Yes, she did. <laughs> So there is a couple of different types of toys that you could choose from. So as I mentioned earlier, you can get an orgasm clitorally, uh, vaginally, or anally. So first determine what type of toy it is. So even though you're mentioning the size, I'm going to assume you're using a toy with a shaft. And sometimes, um, you know, if you are 
if that's your first toy or if you're going in, I wouldn't recommend like a big dog toy, right? So I'm going to talk about a couple of toys and you can kind of gauge what type of toy that you would like. Um, so the first thing that I would talk about is a clitoral toy. So again, we talked about the soul snatcher here. This is womanizer. Um, so womanizer, this is super powerful, but it's not intimidating and it's definitely not something that's going to hurt. So even though you're mentioning toys making you uncomfortable, again, I'm assuming it's a toy with a shaft, but you can go a couple of different routes. So Womanizer is just going to hit the clitoris, this part here. Um, it has that pleasure air technology, so it feels like sucking. So you can get your orgasm that way. You can squirt if you want. Um but this has a couple of different speeds to it. Um, so you're just gonna start off with the, there's a minus sign here, if you can't see, and then it goes to a plus sign. So just keep hitting it until you get your desired effect that you're looking for. Um, so that's the womanizer. Like I said, womanizer does come in a couple of different types. Um, we have, this is pro. We have the womanizer starlet, which is a bit smaller. Um, still, in my opinion, is powerful. It gets the job done. And then we have one that's called Womanizer Duo. Womanizer Duo also has the, the pleasure air technology that sucks on the clitoris, but it also has a, um, a shaft that's attached to it. Um, so you can go a number of ways when it comes to your clitoral stimulation and your womanizer toys. Um, we also have our peach buzz. So this is one of our newer toys. Um, this will stimulate the clitoris and the labia simply because of the size of it. So as you can see, I'm holding it in the palm of my hands and you kind of get an idea of how big it is simply because of, you know, how I'm able to hold it. Um, but because of the size of this, you can kind of get two in one, the clitoris and again, the labia. Um, this has uh, 10 pulsations to it. Um, it's really soft. Like it feels really, um, it feels really soft. It feels good. It so looks like a this stress is, ball, Tony. Like, you know, those stress does, balls. Yeah. But it's, it's hard, not hard, okay. hard. You can't squeeze it like a stress ball. Gotcha. Um, so this is a USB chargeable toy. You're going to stick the charger right on there. It's magnetic. So once you attach it, like hold it up to it, it's going to automatically connect. And I know you can't see it, but there's a tiny little bump here. That's how you're going to turn it on. I hold it down for about five seconds. And that's with all of our toys. So once you hold it down, if you keep pressing it, that will give you the different pulsations so that you can kind of figure out what feeling it is or what pulsation you want to feel. Um, so that's another toy that you can do as far as clitoral and vaginal stimulation. Again, it's not going to go in, obviously, um, but we have this little bump here that can hit the clitoris. Um, just the overall, you can put hold onto the, uh, the labia to um, get that sensation. And then uh, do, Vanessa is 35. So I'm not sure how many toys you try, Vanessa. Um, or if you just tried one, um, it keeps, you say, I keep getting the wrong size toys. This one here, I normally don't recommend this a lot at my parties anymore. Um, if I know I have a, a party with the younger demographic or inexperienced women, I will talk about this. This one is called Turbo. Not a lot of bells and whistles with Turbo. Um, this is a battery operated toy. So mostly everything I showed earlier is a USB chargeable toy. I would say probably 97% of our toys are USB chargeable. So you don't have to worry about batteries. With this particular one, it does take one uh, AA battery. And this has three speeds. So again, there's no bells and whistles. You can put this into the vagina. Um, to turn it on, there's a button here. You're going to hit that button three times because there's three speeds to it. Um, again, to turn it on, hold it down for about four or five seconds. Um, but this is something that you could probably, let's see, I have a quarter here on my desk. So it's the, the circumference of a quarter. As it comes out a little bit, it probably gets a tiny bit wider but not by much at all. Um, so this is something that you could probably start off with um, because it sounds like you haven't, I don't know if you've been starting off with like humongous toys um, or if you have been uh, using smaller toys and they all just are uncomfortable. Now, if that's the case, if you've been using toys that are all small, but it's still uncomfortable, then you may want to use, and I'm not sure, Vanessa, <clears throat> 
based on what I'm about to say next, I'm not sure if you are intimate with um, a person, a penis currently. If you have not been for a while and you've only been using a toy, and let's say it's a smaller toy and you're still uncomfortable, you probably want to look into vaginal dilators. Okay, <clears throat> so what the vaginal dilators are, they are, the best way I can explain it, they are graduated items that, not items, but it's a graduated tool. So there's more than one. You start off with the smallest one, insert it into the vagina, and they help to expand the vagina based on your comfort level. So that might be something, and that's going off on a tangent, depending upon, Vanessa, um, if you haven't been intimate with an actual penis in a while. I don't know, you could have someone, a partner now, but you may just be choosing um, a toy that's just a little bit too big. Um, so in that case, you know, like I said, if you want to kind of downsize your toy, if you're, um, if it's something that's like really super big, um, you can start off with Turbo. Um, like I said, this doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but this, you know, if you want to just start off with a beginner's toy, um, this might be the one. We have one that's even smaller than Turbo that's called Rocket. Um, it looks identical, it's just a little bit smaller. Um, so that might be something that you can do as well. Um, but if you're looking for just, you know, your goal is an orgasm, I would venture out to clitoral toys um, simply because a clitoral orgasm is really, really good, um, especially using the womanizer. So, and also lastly, um, Vanessa, are you using lube? Are you properly lubricated? So we talked about lube earlier. I would 100% use a lubricant with your toys as well, because that could be the problem there. Um, with sex, you know, our vaginas open up. Keep in mind, a baby's head can fit through it, right? Um, so it could be a matter of you're not properly lubricated. Um, and that could be the reason why, because ideally, if we can stick a tampon in it, if a baby's head can come out, um, you should be able to get a toy into it. So I would look into using a lube with your toys as well. Again, don't use a silicone lube because silicone and silicone don't get along depending on um, what your current toys are made of. Um, but just look into a lube as well, because that could very well be the issue. Tony, are you in the mood for one more? Yes, I am. I can take one more. <laughs> she can take one more. Listen, I'm, I've been taking all of them. Y'all been wearing me out this morning. All right, last question. It's a bonus question. It comes from Shell. Shell says, hi, Chris and Tony. I've been with my lover for almost 10 years and he has trouble being penetrated. How can I get us to have sex again? So this leads me to think, Maybe something happened. Um, I don't know if there's some type of trauma, you know, that has, is, you know, causing apprehension with, you know, his partner to have intercourse. With anal, the key is lubrication and it's also relaxation, right? So first, I would recommend having a conversation about, you know, why there's apprehension. Is it due to fear? Is it fear of pain? Um so that's something that's really important to talk about. Um, is it because, you know, something mental? If so, it's very possible that your partner may need to speak with a therapist. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if there's some type of trauma that has occurred in the past, I know you all have been together 10 years, was it? Um, you know, it's very possible that there's some type of, you know, repressed feelings or something that could have happened in the past. So I would recommend- yeah, almost 10, Tony, it says, almost 10 years. Yeah, I would definitely re recommend maybe talking to a therapist just to get down into, you know, why it is that there's apprehension there. Um, but once communication is established, and more importantly, reassurance, um, maybe you can start with a plug you know, and you all can interact that way. Um, and that kind of takes away just the fear of an actual penis being penetrated um, versus the size of, um, you know, a toy. We have a toy, again, called P Curious that I would recommend maybe starting off with that um, because it's not, of course, as big. Um, of course, you want to use your lube, and I'm pretty sure you probably do have lube, um, if it's not a silicone lube, maybe switch to a silicone lube. Um, we have a toy, as I mentioned, we have a toy called Step by Step, and I have it here. 
So step-by-step step is unfortunately being discontinued. But like I said, if you have a couple in my bedroom candy store. So my store is different from my bedroom candy website. Um, so I have products here as well um, that I ship out um, or I carry to my parties. So with step-by-step, step, this probably is something I would highly recommend simply because of the graduated beating. So, you you know, maybe to get him back into the swing of things, you can start with that smaller bead here and then just graduate up. Of course, you're going to use your lube and, you know, hopefully your partner is relaxed enough after you do have that conversation. Um, so this is something that I would de definitely recommend. Hopefully, you know, if you do want to reach out to me <clears throat> or if you do want to go into my bedroom candy store, not website, um, you can get this, but if we don't have it, I do recommend just trying to find something very similar to this um, because this is probably, you know, between this or P Curious, this is probably going to be something that kind of takes away that intimidation factor. And, you know, once you get into it, you know, there's so many nerve endings in the anal you know, area that I, I think it's a mental thing, but once that block is removed, then your partner definitely would be more open to it. So it's about, you know, communicating with your partner first, just to kind of see what the apprehension is and maybe it's something that you can reassure them. Um, also using your lube and then also um, just making sure they're relaxed. Again, I'm not advocating if you don't drink or smoke, um, but maybe CBD or something that's going to help aid in relaxation and calming your partner. Well, listen, y'all wore me out this morning. But Tony, thank you. Y'all yeah, yeah, did. Thank you for coming back on, on and no doing problem. this with us. I learned a lot. I hope everyone listening and watching did. I had like no idea about a lot of these things. And we'll definitely do this again. I'm glad we got this on in the summer while folks are all hot and bothered, you know, out here doing all that traveling and freaking. Okay. But... <laughs> Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you, Tony. So again, uh, you can go to one of my websites. So my main website is thekittychronicles.co, C-O. Uh, if you want to go straight into the nitty gritty and uh, either get a bedroom candy product, book a party, you can do either in person or virtual, depending on where you are in the world. You can go to my bedroom candy website, bkparties.com slash 6109. I mean, of course, I mentioned earlier, if you take your time, if you're too slow checking out, um, it probably will ask you to put in the consultant again. And my consultant ID number is 6109. Or you can also find me on Instagram at bedroomcandy underscore by Tony, T-O-N-I. And I mean, listen, you know, you, you guys kind of got, you know, a little party here, even though we were answering questions. But Tony has way more toys in that arsenal of hers okay so don't just think you're gonna watch this no you need to book and she does virtual parties you can have all your girlfriends over up on your big screen and just tony can just go over all the toys with you and it's interactive i mean how cool is that you know seriously come on y'all um book those parties now i have a question this is my own personal question okay i know dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay <laughs> When is the Lavender Kitty stuff coming out? So Lavender Kitty is my other company. It's a bath and body line focused on self-care and wellness. And so I am actually going to be doing uh, vending events uh, in Woodlawn, Maryland in August, on August the 17th. And there I will have launched on my website a bunch of new Lavender Kitty products. My Lavender Kitty, Lavender Kitty website is lavenderkitty.com or you can find me on Instagram there. Don't judge me for not posting lately. Um, but it's Lavender Kitty Lux. Lavender Kitty Lux. I'll put all of that in there in, in the uh, video and be on the lookout for that because I know I will. And hit Tony up if you want to book a party. Like I told everyone the last time you were on, um, her parties are an incredible immersive experience. Kind of like the Chris David show, you know. <laughs> but but um, to everyone we didn't get today, you know, we'll get to you again soon. Um, definitely anonymous, write us back. Um, Hanif, write us back. Everybody, write us back and let let us know how you did with um, with everything. Star, Rachel, you know, everyone who uh, Shell, 
everyone who wrote in, um, Courtney and and um, Vanessa with the the kitty cat emoji. The, I I can't Tony. I can't get over that. Like she legitimately put a cat in it. Like how cute is she? Like she's <laughs> too cute. Okay. And remember, um, everything is anonymous unless you request it not be. Um, and thanks again, Tony, for coming back. Like and helping the good people out here. Like I really really appreciate this. I'm sure they they're gonna appreciate it too because you are just a wealth of knowledge. Thank and you. that is what I aspire to have on this. That's, that's why I like having on this show. I like having a wealth of knowledge. And thank all of you good people out there for listening and watching. Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your kittens, and tell your bullies. And listen, tell your OBGYN and your urologist. Hell, tell Star's Man and Hanif's future fiance to follow us on Instagram at Chris David TV and follow our show at The Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. You can also visit ChrisDavidShow.com. There you'll find everything you need to know about the show. And I just want to say, your comfort should come first. And remember, they didn't stop making dick when they made it. Right? That's right. <laughs> okay. Now be kind, be well, and talk like sex. Se-